Today we have a story of getting revenge on a roommate that rented out space in someone else's home when they got shipped out to fight in a war. We'll get into that in a bit, but first, I let him cheat so I can watch him fail. This was years ago, but it still brings a smile to my face at times. Back in school, a handful of students, including myself, missed a major test due to extracurriculars. The teacher already arranged for us to take the test in a back room during regular class session. There was a guy, let's call him Eric, who was the typical freak boy who behaved like he was all that in a bag of chips, rude, obnoxious, and didn't once talk to me, until that hour in the testing room. Back in school, I was mostly quiet. If resting witch face was a thing back then, I would have been the poster child for it. I was known to be a bit nerdy, so it wasn't a surprise when he sat right next to me chatting it up. He went on to tell me how I looked like I could be a Victoria's Secret model and I was one of the prettiest girls in the school and blah blah blah. He then asked if he could copy my answers. I smiled and said, sure, give me a few minutes and I'll show you my answer sheet. He grinned and twirled around in his seat, fidgeting with his pencil, making absolutely no effort in taking the test. I look up and whisper, done, hurry up and copy. With no hesitation, he hurriedly copies my work. I told him to walk away first so it wouldn't be suspicious. He did. As he was leaving, he did a weird salute and laughed at the other students still taking the exam. As soon as that door shut, I erased the answers I gave him and filled in the correct answers. I turned my work in shortly after. The teacher said she would take a week to grade them. During that week, Eric didn't say hi to me at all. When he did look in my direction, he would elbow to his friend to laugh at me. I couldn't wait until he got his results. The day finally came. The teacher handed us back our graded tests, and the way he stood up shocked, shouting, an F? and ran over to me to see my A-plus grade was chef's kiss. He definitely stopped laughing at me after that. I think this is the textbook thing that you should do in a situation like that. At least, you know, if it isn't somebody that you're actually cool with and want to help out. The only awkward situation is if it would be one of those tests where you finish it and then you have to just wait for them to come around and collect it. So it's not really possible to do the bait and switch because they'll get the answers, write them all down, and then very blatantly see you erasing everything. Unicasher commented, I actually encourage my students to do that. We had one prolific cheater one year that was so bad that I had to level up. I told the class with a cheater in the room that if they thought somebody was copying, to write the most ridiculous wrong answer and let them copy. She actually wrote purple dinosaur in response to a math question and her fate was sealed. In the end, with help from the above evidence, we got her the academic help she needed, but was constantly denied. Also, hi, I'm Steven, and if you guys enjoy crazy stories of revenge, it would be amazing if you left a like or left a review if you're listening to my podcast. That said, our next story is, petty revenge finally paid off. So about a year ago, I kicked my emotionally, verbally, and financially deadbeat of an ex out of my house, and didn't allow them back in, so that forced me to pack their things up for them. As I was packing, I came across their puzzles, and remembering that they do edges last, who does that even? so I decided to take an edge piece out of every single puzzle they own so they will never know the satisfaction of completing a puzzle. I never expected to find out if my actions ever came to fruition, but I'm lucky enough to have one of their friends as my pal, and my ex sent a photo to my pal of their unfinished puzzle with the caption, seemed to be missing a piece, how unsatisfying. Seems harmless but made me giggle and I know there's plenty more for them to find. I'm kind of curious what would be more annoying in the long run, having a couple of completely random pieces gone, or always just having one edge piece missing. Like what's more annoying, knowing that you'll always be a couple pieces off, or always just being one edge piece off? Excellent ad 1132 commented, you should have taken the removed piece and put it into a different puzzle. Talk about driving them crazy, not only is a piece missing, but they have an extra that doesn't belong. Our next story is Petty Larceny for a Petty Revenge. Today I was helping my parents clean out their wardrobe. It's this big wooden affair that has been in our house since before I was born. They're getting rid of it in favor of a built-in unit. I found an old backpack at the back of the wardrobe. It had probably been there for years. A lot of old stuff keeps coming out of the wardrobe since no one uses it anymore. Thing is, the backpack does not belong to me or to any of my siblings. Rewind a few decades ago, I was in grade 6, I was 10, and had this bully named M. M used to catch locusts slash grasshoppers, you know, the big green lobster looking ones, and chase me around with them to scare me. 
I was and still am terrified of bugs, especially flying and hopping ones. Why do bugs have to fly? Anyway, she had been doing this since grade 4. She would either put the grasshopper in my bag or chase me with it during lunch. Once, she chased me for so long, I decided to walk home instead of waiting for school to end. I told my parents. My dad, he is the rub some dirt in it kind of guy, brushed it off and asked why I was scared of the grasshoppers and explained that the bugs were probably more afraid of me than I was of them. Gee thanks, dad. My mother, the so-called peacekeeper, asked what I'd done to M to make her do this to me. I dreaded going to school every day and my nerves were not happy with me. Cue petty revenge. This is not the part where I tell the teacher, grown-ups were clearly not the answer, or the part where I go nuclear and stage an elaborate revenge. This is the part where I stole her backpack. I was 10 years old and this was the most diabolical thing I could think of. Our school didn't have lockers, so you had to lug all your belongings from home to school. All your belongings. The backpack had her school books, her spare cash, and her bus pass. For days, our teacher asked us to help look for the backpack as M had no way of getting to school and back without the bus pass. No way of doing school work. Since M was notorious for scaring people with critters, the backpack was not found. M told her class teacher that she thought it might be me, but conveniently left out why she thought it might be me. But here's the thing. I used to admit to small crimes, breaking a glass, eating the Ultramel, leaving the sink running, even when I hadn't done it to build up cred for when I committed bigger ones. Breaking a window, spilling soda on my dad's paperwork. So most grown-ups knew that I owned up to my misdoings. So it wasn't so hard to get the teacher to believe me. I even started crying and asking M why she would accuse me of doing something so terrible. Losing one school bag was such a terrible thing and I would never be so cruel. Cue evil laugh. She had to replace all her books and redo all the class assignments as they contributed to the report card. She also had to explain to her parents how she lost the bag and the bus pass. She got in so much trouble with the teachers and even got spanked a few times for not having her homework done. Anyway, clearly I never gave the backpack back and now I guess I'll be throwing it in the trash. If you ever find this mond, yes, it was me after all. I see this as a devastating revenge to that kid. I mean, at that age, your backpack with all of your stuff in it, that's practically your life. If I were in M's position, first of all, I wouldn't be bullying other kids, but I would be so anxious and so uptight and so wound up over losing my backpack and all of my stuff. Although that does take me back to elementary school and there were some pretty hefty sized grasshoppers around. And there was a rare time at recess where I might have grabbed one and chased some people around with it. But I maintain I'm not a bully. I didn't make a habit out of doing that. And speaking of grasshoppers, I even saw one when I was outside today and it was massive. It's called an Eastern Lubber Grasshopper. It is legitimately frightening how big they can get. Amateur Biotic commented, For a child, this qualifies as nuclear revenge. Good for you. Candyland Canada added, Depending on your location, you were too young to be charged with a crime. Accordingly, I know nothing of this, never heard about it, wasn't there. If I was there, then I was sleeping, and I've never seen that backpack before in my life. Our next story is, the best revenge is self-inflicted. So I'm driving north through Maryland on I-95, and this white Acura is just being a jerk. Traffic is heavy, and he's tailgating and weaving back and forth. Come on, we're all stuck in this. No one is choosing to slow you down. At one point, I'm in the right lane, and he's basically trying to drive in my back seat. And then we get to the work zone with heavy enforcement and speed cameras. Everyone slows down and spreads out, even white Acura. And then it happens. I am in the right lane, white Acura is in the left a bit behind me, car ahead of him switches lanes to the right to get in front of me. I can see the speed camera box like a beautiful, beautiful gift. So I hit my left turn signal like I'm going to get in front of him. He floors it because of course he does. Nice flash from the speed camera, it had a perfect view of his plate. Hope he enjoys his speeding ticket. I definitely don't think I'm alone in this, but when I come across people like this, I would rather slow down and just remove myself. I would rather slow down to the point where multiple other people get in front of me, just so I have some distance between this swerving traffic rager. At the very least, if his moronic butt causes something, at least I'll be a few cars back. Nit Sanity commented, This is even better than mine. Out of state driver up my butt going through town, right near where I know the cops hang out to catch speeders. 
I pulled over to let this guy pass and he zoomed past me like his butt was on fire just over the rise and into the hands of the local speed trap. As I went past, I slowed down and called out, thanks Tom, and waved. He waved back. The jerk driver looked very unhappy. Our next story is, lawyer refused to correct his business cards. So this was quite a few years ago, early 2000s. At this point, I had my cell number for about four years. Then, one night, I got multiple calls from someone who only spoke Chinese. I kept telling them that they had the wrong number, which I'm pretty sure they didn't understand. These calls persisted every few weeks at all times of day and night, but most frequently between midnight and 3 a.m. Eventually, after about six months, I received a call from a legal assistant to a lawyer called Colin W. She explained to me that there was a typo on his business cards. Instead of a 3 in his phone number, it has a 2, which was my number. She asked if I received calls just to give the person the correct number. I responded that 1. 99% of the calls I receive are from people that only speak Chinese. And 2. Can they just get new cards or write the proper number on it? She responded that they ordered a lot of cards and didn't want to order new ones, but they'll make an effort to put the correction on the card. About 4-5 to five months go by with no late night calls, so I figured the problem was solved. But I was wrong, because they started up again, this time more frequent. Like every 2-3 to three days, multiple calls a day at all hours. So I called Colin W. He apologized and said that he ran a very small immigration law firm, and that his legal assistant had quit and it was her that had made the phone number correction on the card, and he was far too busy to remember to make the correction every time he handed out his cards. He asked if I could just give the person calling the correct number. I told him that was almost impossible because 99% of his clients didn't speak English, which he replied with, try your best, and hung up. This really frustrated me, but what could I do? For the next few months, I tried my best to correct people, but very few understood me and would repeatedly call me after I hung up on them. Then, one day, I was at the mall with friends. A lady at one of those kiosks asked if I'd like to enter a contest to win a trip to Florida or Mexico. My friend was like, don't, it's a timeshare scam and as soon as they get your number, they constantly call you with, you want a free trip that you have to pay fees for. That's when I had a great thought of how to get my petty revenge. I entered Colin W. into the contest. In fact, there were multiple contests at the mall I entered him into, from trips to free gym memberships to gift cards. Side note, i had been receiving calls for this guy for almost a year. Besides his name and number, I looked up his law firm address and email online, because he wouldn't take my call of me complaining. I had emailed him to get new cards and even wrote a snail mail letter to get him to fix his cards. I had a lot of downtime at work, so I started to enter him into contests online. Usually 5 to 15 a day, I did this 5 days a week when I was at work and anytime I was out shopping for about 8 months. I would have continued longer, but at about the 8 month mark, I stopped getting calls for Colin W. Around a week after that, I looked him up online and he had changed his cell phone number. Edit, I forgot that summer, my boss hired his nephew for high school credits. He thought what I was doing was hilarious, so he spent a lot of time there contributing to my petty revenge. I think the things that really helped OP out in actually achieving this revenge is A. It was a small business, so I'm assuming this was actually more of a personal line rather than a more official business line. And that brings me to B. This was the early 2000s, so they weren't too strict about verifying whether or not it's even a personal phone number they're getting. A lot of these online contests and competition things now are actually so well set up that if you try to use a business line or you try to even use like a VoIP line like Google or Skype, it's able to detect that and say, no, you can't submit that. Just some guy 56 commented, the phone company split off the area where I live into a new area code. A few months later, they had assigned my number in the old area code to a trash hauler. All their trucks and dumpsters had their number without the area code painted on the side. I started getting calls from people wanting to rent a dumpster. I called the company and suggested they paint the area code on their trucks. They basically blew me off. So when people went to rent a dumpster, so when people called to rent a dumpster, I would tell them we're sold out and gave them the number of another hauler. Our next story is Rude Guy in the Bus. 
So I'm on the bus right now and I'm sitting in the front row. For some context, I'm German and people usually keep their distance here. The bus wasn't too full but most seats were taken. Nobody had to stand though. I usually put my bag on the seat next to me but if anybody comes and asks for the seat, I of course remove my bag so they can sit. Now, an older guy got on the bus a few stops after I got on, and since I sat in the first row, he wanted to sit there. Usually not a problem, but the guy decided to not even ask or motion for me to move my bag, and instead just grabbed it and moved it by himself. I hate people touching my belongings, so I took it and put it on my lap. I was about to tell him something like, you could have just asked, but I didn't. Instead, I turned the volume of my music all the way up. I'm wearing headphones, of course, to take my revenge. I was listening to Mother Mother, but I thought that their music wasn't aggressive enough, so I put on a metal song, Vicinity of Obscenity in particular, and I know that you can really hear it through my headphones because another time while I was on the bus listening to it, someone asked for the song name. I kept it on full volume until eventually the guy got up and moved to another seat. Mission accomplished, I'd say. I know that this is only a minor thing, but I believe it was still a bit petty from me. Deserved though. Edit, guys, you're acting like I killed that guy's dog or something. Yes, I could have just not done that, and I know it was petty, but I also didn't want him grabbing my bag. I doubt any of you would appreciate it if some random guy just grabbed your stuff. Some people said that he might have asked to sit down, but he didn't. The bus also wasn't as crowded as you think. There were a few more empty rows. Others said that I'm childish. Well, perhaps. But I'm also a minor. Even before you consider how it obviously would feel to be a woman in a situation like this where some random stranger just plops down right next to you, can we all agree that if you get on the bus and there are more empty rows, that you should go and sit in those rows unless you know that person? Maybe I'm just screaming into the void as an introvert American, but I would feel like you are intentionally invading what little privacy I have on this public bus by choosing not to just sit in the other empty row. It's the same thing as the unspoken urinal etiquette. If you walk into a bathroom with urinals and there's one guy standing at the first urinal, you go to the furthest away urinal and use that one. If there's a guy at the first and last urinal, you space it out so there's equal space between you and the other two people if possible. Don't be that weirdo that walks into the bathroom and nuzzles up to the urinal right next to the other person currently peeing. Sit in the empty row, substantial shame 454 commented. I was on a train to Dortmund a few weeks ago, and a guy boarded the train listening to music, no headphones on his phone. I noticed people getting annoyed and rolling their eyes but not saying anything, because 98% of Germans I've met are polite or don't want conflict. As an American, I took it upon myself to remedy this. I disconnected my headphones and blasted Priests of Sodom by Cannibal Corpse. It took only 6 seconds before the guy got the message. This next story is one of my good friend's wedding gifts. So one of my good friends married the worst person. Background, the first time I met her, she came off as very arrogant. Our next story is one of my good friend's wedding gifts. So one of my good friends married the worst person. Background, the first time I met her, she came off as very arrogant. My friend invited the new girl he was dating to trivia night at the pub we regular at. She argued every answer the group agreed on. Normally, our group finishes trivia night in the top three, there was seven of us at the time, and our combined knowledge pretty much covered all categories. This night was special for us because we were on a four-week win streak, about to break the old one. The pub had a rule that you broke the streak, your tab was covered for the whole night, and four was the streak for the last three years. My friend and his new girlfriend missed the first two of the three rounds. We were in first place by only three points. How trivia worked at the bar was that they had three rounds of 30 questions that were displayed on the TV for one minute. No cell phone rule, the staff monitored. If they saw a cell phone at the table, they grabbed your sheet and you were out for that round, even if it was off and just sitting at the table. They had really cool prizes every week. Anyhow, my friend and his girlfriend showed up for the last round. As I said, she argued every group decided answer. At that end of that round, we were confident we had every question right. Our mistake was my friend's new girlfriend said she would hand in the sheet. The host at the end hands our sheet back, saying we'd have won if we didn't change our first answers. We were like, what? He hands the sheet back and a bunch of our answers are crossed out and changed. Everyone at the table looks at my friend's girlfriend. She was like, I thought I was right and you guys were wrong on most of the answers, so I changed them. The pub never recovered after COVID and shut down, so the streak was never beat. 
Years went by and she only got worse. Anyways, this is a petty revenge story, not my friend's terrible wife story, so I'm going to fast forward to their wedding gifts. She controlled everything on the wedding. My friend had to argue that she couldn't choose his groomsmen. She literally told him he can pick his best man, but his six groomsmen had to be her three brothers, two cousins, and a college friend of hers. The only time he stood up to her and said, no, if I can't choose my groomsmen, wedding off. Anyhow, after that drama and getting the message that I'm a groomsman, I get an email and a voice message from his fiance. All gifts have to be off their wedding registry or a minimum of $300 in cash or gift cards of her selected stores. Most of them were for her dogs, like spas, groomers, or apparently dog hotels. Anyhow, I'm a giant nerd and six months before the wedding, I was at a comic book convention. My friend is a big Star Wars fan and Mark Hamill was there so my wedding gift was a rebel helmet signed by Mark Hamill. I told the groomsmen what I brought, and it spread like wildfire. Apparently, my friend's side of the family didn't like her, and a lot of mutual friends hated the $300 minimum limit. I missed the gift opening because I was hungover, but I found out when I woke up that more than 50% of the gifts for the wedding were Star Wars memorabilia and collector's items. My friend's wife apparently had a mental breakdown. Unfortunately, they're still married, but my friend has a cool man cave in the basement full of Star Wars memorabilia. In a way, you almost have to say like, this guy must have true love. Like, this friend must just love that woman so unconditionally to be able to look past all this stuff. Either that or he must be miserable and is the ultimate pushover, I don't know which. Coder Joe one commented, What bet did your friend lose to have to marry her? OP responded saying, He settled for less. He's not very attractive, but is from money. He lost his freedom and money. She quit her job after the marriage. She's barren, so not a stay-at-home mom if you don't count her five dogs. He's not allowed to go out after 8pm because that's when she goes to bed and doesn't feel safe if he's not there. But she can go on vacation alone with no problem. My friend works out of town once in a while. When he does, she goes somewhere around the world. Note, she's not a trophy wife either. She's overweight, pushing 300 pounds, but not bad in the face. Our next story is, told a family that stole my water bottle that I had an STI. Context, I, 22 year old female, work in an amusement park during the summer holidays to make some extra cash on the side. My job role involves checking people's tickets, placing them onto the ride, checking some safety restraints, and watching over the ride course in case of an emergency happening. While I was checking safety restraints, I noticed that one of the customers had stolen my water bottle. The man stole my water bottle and passed it to his wife, who then gave it to their child daughter. I briefly noticed it happen out of the corner of my eye. I don't know what came over me, I guess I was tired just due to having to deal with countless tired, exhausted and cranky guests, and I thought that the family needed to learn a lesson to not steal people's water bottles. I walked up to the man and I told him that he shouldn't have stolen it. He looked panicked and apologized and asked if I wanted it back. I declined and I said that for his information, I have mouth herpes, before showing him a mouth ulcer I had, not from herpes but from accidentally biting my mouth while eating. He looked panicked and then told his wife who broke down sobbing and she called me a jerk. While telling my friends and family about this, they all seem rather split. Some of my friends thought it was a really funny prank to pull, while a lot of others and my family think that while the family was in the wrong to steal my property in broad daylight, I shouldn't have given the family such a scare from a serious disease. Some questions I got asked on the original post and I couldn't answer, was it a disposable or refillable water bottle? It was a $10 refillable water bottle. I remember a commenter asking on the original post if it was a Stanley or another trendy water bottle of sorts. It isn't. I don't get paid enough to afford a glorified $50 cup. How do you know he stole your water bottle? Is it possible that he thought it was lost? My water bottle has a rather unique design. I got it while on vacation in Japan and the design is very cute. Definitely kid-like to some extent, which could explain the reasoning as to why he stole it. I don't think he thinks it was lost property because why would you drink out of a water bottle that you're going to return to lost property anyways? Where was it located? While the ride is operating, I stand near the electrical booth close to the ride exit. The bottle is located in a small corner in a rather obscure location. If someone were to try and take it, they would have had to have gone on the ride to access the exit and since you can see the exit from the entrance queue, the family would have definitely seen me drink out of it at least once. 
Also, other than the occasional two minutes I'm away, I'm always either standing near the bottle or holding it slash drinking from it. Edit 2. Holy freak, this blew up. I think some people asked me some more questions, so I'll answer them here. Did I tell them I was lying? Nope, which may make me a jerk, but I think they really needed to learn their lesson. I've had serious illnesses in the past that, if passed to a kid, could really harm them. I think I had pneumonia early February, and I did have strep throat last year, August, which, if I recall correctly, can lead to meningitis and scarlet fever, which is not fun to have. How did you afford a trip to Japan, but not a Stanley Cup? I can't afford a trip to Japan, too. My parents paid for the trip in full because it was a family vacation. I spent like $500 total and I was saving up for months for that. Work hard, kiddos. Why didn't I want it back? It wasn't a super expensive water bottle and I could always buy another one. Also, I don't know what sort of diseases the family has considering that this might not be the first time they've stolen a random person's water bottle. I don't want to risk catching whatever they've got if this is a habit of theirs. Also, this post served as a reminder that I should probably get tested for STDs myself. So, thank you so much to the commenters for reminding me that I should probably get that checked out soon. I know this isn't an am I the jerk here story, but I feel obligated to say OP is not the jerk. You mean to tell me I went to Disneyland and all I got was a lousy case of mouth herpes? I think most people can agree that stealing some stranger's water bottle and just starting to drink from it is horrendously disgusting, especially in employees because you know what, they probably stood there for hours in the sun chugging from that thing. Who knows how much backwash is in that bottle. Also, OP's family ripping into them for spreading a very serious disease that studies say supposedly over 3.7 billion people under the age of 50 already have. Chances are the parents that stole that water bottle already have it themselves. Fiona9 commented, While you don't actually have herpes, you do have an open sore on your mouth and they chose to drink out of your bottle. You aren't wrong to put them in their place. It's disgusting they gave an abandoned water bottle to their kid. Our next story is, person stealing my pizza pops. So in the coffee room at work, we have a big communal fridge slash freezer. There are approximately 80 people that work at the business. I had a box of pizza pops in the freezer part and would notice that every other day, a single pack from the box would go missing. The next week, I bought another box and proceeded to pop the plastic covering on each individual pop. And sure as crap, another one went missing. So I went to the computer and wrote up a Word document and taped it to the fridge that went as such. I hope you've been enjoying my pizza pops. Perhaps you have noticed that the plastic wrap on the pops were opened. That's because I went and dipped them in the toilet first. You're welcome. Really, the idea is to just do whatever you can to gross the person out so much that they'll never think of stealing that food again. I think it's literally either something like what OP did, or going to like... Carolina Reaper Powder or something like that. 5432198 commented, A more nuclear option would be to buy a box and let it thaw and sit out for a while, then refreeze. Our next story is, Getting revenge on my roommate that rented out space in my home while I was fighting in the first Gulf War. I owned a duplex and lived in the front unit. I rented my finished basement to a guy, let's call him Hulk, that was basically a con man. I was shipped out to the Gulf the day after Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait, was gone fighting the Gulf War for seven and a half months. While I was gone, Hulk rented out my bedroom, quest room, sofa, and some floor space to a bunch of loser friends. Things were broken and missing when I got back. I kicked him out. While I was gone, Hulk picked a fight in a bar with a 70 plus year old guy. They went out to the parking lot and Hulk took a swing at the old man. He woke up three days later in the ICU of the local hospital. The little old man was a retired union enforcer. Hulk had no health care insurance. He sued the bar and the old man. Frivolous lawsuits were part of his income. The civil suit against the little old man was dismissed with prejudice by the judge. The bar's insurance agreed to pay Hulk $25,000. Hulk owed the hospital $38,000. I knew one of the ladies that worked in the hospital collections office. I told her the name of the bar, the attorney, the insurance company, and the $25,000 settlement. The Hulk is still trying to figure out how the hospital found out about the settlement and garnished it. This was just one of many ways I got Perry revenge on the Hulk. Pee off the wrong person and bad doo-doo does occur. 
I mean, realistically, there's nothing better than some absolute jerk like this having a detail in the story that goes, they got into a fight with a little old 70-year-old man and woke up in the hospital three days later. Line grabbing commented, good god, he got dumped by a 70 grandfather in a fist fight. What a loser. Good for you to rat him to the hospital. Was what OP did the right thing to do? I'd like to know what you guys think. But with that being said, that's all the time we have for today. Now, if you want to hear another absolutely crazy revenge story, check out that video on the left. Or if you missed my latest video, check out that video on the right. That said, I'll see you all next time with some more stories.